We want to run now uh, real briefly through uh, several different forms of corrosion now that we've talked about um, the oxidation reduction reactions. We've talked about um, the electrochemistry of corrosion. So now we'll talk about kind of uh, various cases. Um, the first is just uh, what's called a uniform attack. And all that is is that, that you have oxidation and reduction, uh, reduction reactions that are occurring randomly over the surface. And this is what you typically see when you look at a rusted car in the field, uh, or you look at uh, if you have real silverware as opposed to the fake stuff that you, you buy at Walmart, uh, the silver will tarnish, kind of turn black. Uh, that's, that's an example of a uniform attack. Okay. Um, one that is a bit more um, specialized to really what we've been talking a lot about is galvanic corrosion. And that occurs when you put two metals or alloys with different compositions and you couple them electrically and expose them to an electrolyte. So what you're seeing in this picture is a galvanized pipe that's joined to a copper pipe. And so, of course, they have different um, uh, potentials, which, which, uh, which leads to then a, an oxidation reduction reaction, especially in the presence of an electrolyte like water would be in this case. So there's, a, there's several ways that we can mitigate this kind of corrosion. So let's talk about uh, several mitigation approaches. Uh, one that I hope uh, comes to mind uh, first is that we could choose metals that are close together in the gal galvanic series. Remember, the, the further apart they are in the galvanic series, the, the greater their potential, the more, the more uh, driving force there is for that to actually react. So if we choose uh, metals that are closer together, then they're their potential is lower and their reactivity is going to be uh, lower. Okay, we could also electrically insulate them uh, in, in whatever fashion so that we, we, um, th they aren't able to, to form that galvanic couple that is ultimately what leads to the, the corrosion. Um, we could do uh, what's we could use what's called a sacrificial anode, which is where we connect a third anodic material. So that's that's something that is going to act as where the oxidation happens. And so basically we're going to have all the oxidation occur in that material and it's going to save the other two materials from from uh, from oxidizing. OK. And then finally, you could uh, make the anode to cathode surface area ratio very large. And the reason that works is because obviously there's a, you, you kick out one electron and then you bond it, you, for, you, you have an electrical path then has it reform with some ion in the, in the reduction reaction. If the surface area is large, then it won't, it won't uh, remove very much material to cause the reaction uh, on the cathode surface. Okay, uh, another is what's called crevice corrosion, and this is believed to occur due to local ion concentration differences in the electrolyte. So that can happen, like in this case, I'm showing you a jointed connection where you had uh, washers and it was immersed in seawater. And right underneath the washers, um, there was a different uh, uh, chlorine and sodium concentration than there was in the bulk. And because of that, there was a potential difference. Anytime you have a potential difference, you're going to induce corrosion. So uh, that we have a few mitigation approaches here. One would be use welds rather than bolted joints and then you don't have the ability to get in to these uh, very small regions where we might uh, induce electrolyte concentrations. Uh, you can use non-absorbing gaskets uh, so that uh, again if you if the gasket can absorb then it can result in a, in a concentration difference from the let's say the bulk to right in the the region the local region where the this crevice would be. Um, and then obviously re remove any accumulated deposits that do occur because impurities can lead to um, local ion concentration differences as well. Uh, like crevice corrosion, another phenomenon is called pitting. Uh, it's believed to occur due to local ion concentration differences within the electrolyte. Uh, and this, but in this case, it'll be from surface impurities and or debris, and it's particularly of concern with stainless steels. What you're looking at here in this picture is uh, pitting on a 316L stainless steel pipe. Uh, there's a few mitigation approaches that we can use here. Uh, one is you can polish the surface to remove the defects. Uh, that helps. It doesn't alleviate it entirely. And then it's also been found that if you alloy this uh, alloy the stainless with 2% molybdenum, uh, that that also helps to mitigate uh, a pitting corrosion. Okay, 
Another form of corrosion is called intergranular corrosion. And all that is is corrosion that occurs preferentially between the grains. So it occurs along the grain boundaries. Usually this is a problem for stainless steels and it's because the attack, there's gonna be a corrosive attack on the chromium carbide particles that sometimes can exist at the grain boundaries. Uh, and that sometimes can, be the, can occur because of heat from a weld. And so what you're looking at in this picture is exactly that, where there was a stainless steel weld and near the weld, there, were, um, uh, uh, there was a region where the, uh, uh, the chromium carbide particles was highly concentrated and that uh, led to enhanced corrosion uh, at those locations. Some mitigation approaches for this is to, you, you can heat, heat treat the, stain, the stainless to redissolve all the chromium carbide particles so that there isn't a concentration at the grain boundary. Uh, you could lower the carbon content in your steel below 0.03 weight percent so that the likelihood of forming chromium carbide particles are lower. And the other option is that you can alloy the stainless with niobium or titanium. Uh, that also seems to help. So those are sort of the, uh, the, the main ones that I want to devote an entire slide to. Uh, there's some other forms of corrosion that I at least want you to know the definition of. Uh, the one is called selective leaching. It occurs in solid solutions uh, where one constituent is going to preferentially be corroded away. So right, a brass is made of copper and zinc. Uh, if you have de-zincification of brass, that's going to be the removal of zinc from the, the, the brass solid solution. Uh, that's an example of selective leaching. Erosion corrosion is just simply combined chemical corrosion like we've talked about with additional wear commonly from a moving fluid. And so what you're looking at is this elbow where the fluid has impinged on the elbow to turn it, you know, as we might expect, and it has enhanced the rate of corrosion because it's combining corrosion with wear. And then the final um, uh, corrosion form, either called stress corrosion, I, I'm more familiar with it in the, in the, by calling it stress corrosion cracking. And all it is, is it's a combined chemical and tensile stress. So it's a, a rather combined failure because of chemical and tensile stress. So I usually think of it actually uh, as in, I, from the other end, uh, your, this text, uh, basically begins with it in corrosion. I've typically thought of it in terms of fracture mechanics where there's some stress that's required to drive fracture. And if we add some chemical attack corrosion in this case, it, it dramatically reduces the, or can reduce the stress required to cause fracture. But it's bot the bottom line is it's some combined tensile uh, tensile load with a mechanical or, or with a chemical corrosion component and it uh, reduces the observed fracture stress as the upside. So um, this this is uh, some sort of a, a horseshoe uh, um, a bracket. The Obviously the tensile strength as you crank, the, the tensile stress as you crank that bolt is gonna be on the outside edge. And so you can see uh, shown sort of by the circle that there's been cracking uh, in that region. Uh, this This has been um, uh, immersed in seawater. So this is just a, a picture from your textbook. So those are the primary forms of corrosion that you need to be aware of. Um, and then uh, at least for some of the, the specialty cases, a few methods to mitigate corrosion if you're out there and uh, you find yourself encountering this uh, in actual engineering practice.